Hi YouTube, it's your girl Juanita Franklin coming to you guys with another video on today. But before I get into what this video is about, I just want to say I hope all is well with everyone. I hope everybody's doing fine. I hope everybody's keeping themselves safe from COVID-19, wearing your mask, keeping your hand, using hand sanitizer. I just hope everybody, everybody's doing fine. Hope all is well with everybody on this morning. Um, guys, I decided to do a, do a vlog for you guys, giving you guys, talk about different topics um, I want to discuss with you guys. Um, I want to get, give you guys an update on my daughter. And I also want to talk about this tornado we just had, guys. We had a tornado here in Chicago two days in a row. Um, that terrified the crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. So first, I want to talk to you guys about my daughter. Then I get into this tornado business next. Uh, discuss about the tornado with you guys. Um, yeah, my daughter, my autistic daughter, um, she is currently still in the hospital. It's been a whole week she's been in there. She got admitted in there last Monday, and today is Tuesday. Now, mind you, I upload the vlog two or three days after she got admitted into the hospital. The, the vlog I put on there um, about her being in the hospital. The last vlog I, I uploaded, she already had been in the hospital two or three days before I uploaded that vlog. Um, the reason she ended up in the hospital, guys, is because prior to her ending up in the hospital, she had a decrease in appetite. She did. She, she was, her appetite was decreasing. She was losing weight. And she, mind you, my daughter already small. She never been no big person. She always been a, a real small person. She already small. She needed to be losing no weight. She was losing weight. Her appetite was, her appetite was decreasing. She barely wanted to eat. She would barely eat her food. I had to force her to eat her food or I have to feed her myself. I bought some vitamins, you know, and gave her vitamins and trying to see would the vitamins help her increase her appetite, you know, and give her appetite to start eating a full meal. So even though she was taking the vitamins, she was eating, it increased her appetite a little bit, but not that much. She was eating, but she still would like eat real slow, take out there, eat her food. And she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't all, all the time eat all of, sometimes she eat all of, sometimes she didn't. So anytime my daughter lost weight to the point you can see her bones. I didn't like that. Okay, I knew something went right. I just didn't know what it was. Something is not right because this girl losing weight. You know what I'm saying? And so she cried all night. She was just crying all night, eight hours, nine hours, ten hours straight. Crying all night, went to sleep. None of that just kept crying. So... I was trying to make her sleep. And um, she was just up crying all night. She went to sleep. So she finally went to sleep about, she went to sleep like 10 o'clock the next morning. She cried the whole entire night. She went to sleep like 10 o'clock the next morning. And um, she woke up. She slept all day. She woke up crying again hysterically crying, just crying out of sleep. And so I called the hospital and um, they transferred me to not her doctor, but another doctor. And they told me, and I left a voicemail on the doctor's voicemail explaining what's going on with my daughter. And the doctor called me right back immediately. The doctor called me back immediately. And she was like, when I was explaining everything about my daughter lost weight, she got appetite decreased. Um, she won't eat all her food. She was crying all night and stuff like that. They didn't like that. So they was like, you know, bring her in, bring her in immediately. And they was like, because she's autistic, she's nonverbal. If something is going on with her, something is hurting her, if she's any kind of pain, she cannot talk to tell us what's going on with her. Because, you know, guys, my daughter's autistic. She was born nonverbal. They got different levels of autistic. They got some autistic kids. Some, some autistic people was born verbal. Some autistic people was born nonverbal. My daughter was born nonverbal. So they was like, she can't verbalize herself. She can't talk to tell us that something is going on with her. So bring her in. She said, it sounds like 
we're going to have to keep her. She said, sound like something is not right with her. It sound like we got to keep her. And I said, okay. So that's when I took her in. I called my godson. And I told my kids what the doctor said. I told my godson what the doctor said. And um, my guy said, Mama, I'm going to come and take you. And I said, okay, because he was off for that day. He didn't have to work. He said, I'm going to come and take you. He did, and my goddaughter was already here. So he said, but he said I'm going I'm to I'm come and take you. So me, him, and my goddaughter, we got together, and we took her to the hospital, okay? And then um, um, one hospital we took her to, they said we're going to transfer the ambulance to another hospital because – they didn't have all these. You know, some hospitals is small hospitals. Some hospitals huge hospitals. Some hospital here in Illinois. I don't know if every state like this, but some hospital they don't have all the equipment they need to run the necessary different tests they want to run on you. So they'll transfer you to another hospital for the tests. And, and that's what they did. They tra transferred my daughter to another hospital for different tests they wanted to run on her because they didn't have the all the equipment they needed to run the necessary tests they need to they, they wanted to run. So they transferred her to another to another hospital in the MLMs, okay? And I rode in the MLMs with my daughter. Me and my goddaughter got in the MLMs with her and rode with her to the other hospital. Mind you, when they got to the other hospital, that's the hospital I uploaded on YouTube. They ran all kind of tests on her. They did chest x ray, they did blood work, they did they checked her ears and stuff like that. They did they ran all kind of tests on her. So they the one uh, found out something was wrong with my daughter, which I knew something went right because your appetite ain't going to just decrease out of nowhere. You're going to just start losing weight out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You gonna want to, my daughter didn't even want to eat. She was losing her appetite. She didn't even want to eat. I had to force her to eat. And then someday, then sometimes I would sit there and feed her to make her eat because she didn't want to eat herself. She would just sit let there. I would fix her some food. She would let the food sit there all day won't touch it. And I make her eat or I feed her myself because I don't want my daughter doing it. I don't want her not eating because that's not healthy. So I would make her eat her food, okay? And so when they got to run all different tests on her, they told me they glad I brought her in because her sugar level had dropped all the way down to 54. And they said it was dangerous. They were saying her organs could have failed. And uh, they said it was very low. So they was working on, and that's the reason they kept her. They said it was dangerous. So organs could have felt and stuff. And they was like, they got to get her sugar level back up to normal. And um, she feels she's still in the hospital right to this day. And um, they was telling me they're going to keep her. They're not sending her back home and stuff like that. So I said, okay. So they, 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 um, uh, I sat at the hospital with her all night. Me and my goddaughter, my godson, we sat at the hospital all night. I didn't leave the hospital till like, I don't know. I know it was super late when I left there. I think I left there probably about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we got her there about a little after 5 in the evening. And I sat up in the hospital all night with my baby till about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And then when I, you know, I knew they was going to admit her in. Um, I came on home. You know what I'm saying? And um, so yeah, her sugar level dropped down was super low to like 54. They were saying it was dangerous. It can cause her organs to fail. I mean, it terrified the mess out of me. I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified because that's my baby and I'm a mother. That's my daughter, you know what I'm saying? And they had her heavily sedated because she was in some kind of pain. And when your sugar level dropped down low, it does different things to your body. So it makes you dizzy, causes bad headaches. It's caused some it caused pains in your body. My daughter was in, in severe pain. And that's one of the reasons she was hollering like that. She was in severe pain. And um, they had to heavily sedate her with medication. Um, they helped sedate my baby. They put her to sleep and stuff like that. You know, because my daughter was like going through a whole thing she was and one thing about having an autistic child that can't talk and verbalize they stuff if they in some type of pain you know uh, once in a while um and they can't they can't even talk to tell you if they're literally hurting uh they can't talk to tell you um if something is bothering them you know so they can't say hey, mom she can't say mom i'm having bad pain my, i got a bad headache she can't say mom my camera cut off. 
but she said she can't say mom i have a bad headache mom my chest is hurting she can't verbalize herself uh, to tell me what's wrong with her and you know and that's why doctor said well, bring her in because she can't even we, she can't talk to tell us what's going on so you bring her in you know so i did i took her in and um so they send me your sugar love job download. It, do, it does different. It can do. It does different things to your body, and it, it can do different things to your body. And they said it's dangerous because, once again, your organs, your organs can fail. It can cause your. It can cause, it can cause your organs to fail, and that's that's not good, you know. So she's in the hospital. She been in there a whole week. She's still in there. I went out there to see her, cause you know my daughter had pneumonia about a year ago. She stayed in the hospital almost two weeks. And I wasn't able to go see her because of COVID. And it made me feel bad because I couldn't go see my baby. But I was calling out there constantly every single day, calling out there. But this time I was able to go see my baby. And when I walked in, when I walked out in the hospital, when I got to the hospital, she lit up when she saw me. <laughs> she got so happy when she saw me. She lit up when I went to visit her. She was happy when uh, she saw me and stuff like that. She did. She lit up and she was happy when she saw me. Yeah, and uh, I gave her the biggest hug ever. I gave her the biggest kiss ever on her cheeks. And, um, you know, I visited for, I stayed there for, I stayed with her for a while. And then I talked to the nurse and stuff. They signed her. But she's nonverbal and she's autistic. They signed her to a nurse. They got a nurse um, sit with, that sit with her 24 hours, 7 days a week. So I literally um, talked to the nurse and stuff. And, when I when it's time for me to leave, guys, my daughter wanted to come home. She, she's she was pointing to her feet. Now, mind you, she's nonverbal, but she do be trying to say mom. She be saying mom. She say mom like that. And um, it's certain words, like I said, my daughter do be trying to say, even though she's nonverbal. And if you really listen to her, you can understand what she's trying to say to you. But in a lot of words, she can't say it all. You know what I'm saying? So, um, she, cause she, like I said, a lot of words she can't say at all, but the little few words she do try to say, I'll be understanding what she's saying. You know what I'm saying? And, um, she's pointing to her feet, telling me to put her shoes on and she was trying to say she want to come home with me. <laughs> and I was like, nah, you got to stay here till the doctor discharged you. But the first couple of days she went in there, I felt so down. I felt so down guys. I was, I felt a little depressed. I was, I lost my appetite. I didn't really want to eat. My other kids made me eat. You know, they like, Mom, you got to eat. Got to get up and eat you something. I felt so down for two days in a row. I felt so down because that's my baby. I love my baby. No mother want to see the, no mother want their kids sick. So I felt so freaking down, guys. Um, I swear to God, I felt so down. And then, um, and then I started feeling a little better. You know, because I, I called the hospital. Man, I went to visit my daughter, but I still call out there all the time. And she's still in the hospital. You know, um, thank God for your prayers. Um, they did say um, she's getting up, she's getting better. Thank God for your prayers. I hope she continues to stay better. I hope continue, she continue to, co to continue doing okay, all right. I just hope she be good. You know what I'm saying? And I hope she continues to stay good. Like I said, I'm a mother before anything. I love my kids. Um, my kids mean the world to me. Um, my daughter, she's was born different. She's born autistic. Uh, she wasn't born like everybody else's kids. And there's a lot of parents in the world that has an autistic child. I'm not the only one um, who has an autistic child. Some verbal, some nonverbal. Mine just happened to be born nonverbal. Um, I miss my baby. I'm not gonna lie. I miss my baby. I miss my baby. I, I'm trying to be strong. I miss my baby. She been in there a whole week. <sighs> she miss my baby, and um, I love all my kids the same. But she's autistic. She was born special needs. She's a special needs person. She's born a special needs baby. She's born a special needs child. Um, so I do have a special place in my heart for her uh -huh, cause she's my special need baby I got a special place in my heart for her I have a special love for her because she's she's special need she's born different 
than my other kids. She was born different than a lot of kids out here in this world. She wasn't born um, like we were born. You know what I'm saying? She was born different. And I do I love my baby. I love my baby so much. Um, God saw fit to give her to me. You know what I'm saying? He saw fit to make me her mother. He saw fit to make her my child. He saw fit. He knew when I got pregnant with her and carried her nine months and gave birth to her. He knew that I would love her unconditionally. He knew that I would treat her no different from my other kids. I treat them all the same. He knew that I would never be ashamed of her because she cannot help the way she was born. She did not make herself like that. If she was able to make herself, she would have made herself different. Um, God give those kids to parents. He know will love them unconditionally. He know will raise them. He know, you know, will not be ashamed of them. I would never be ashamed. You can't be ashamed of something God gave you. You can't be ashamed of something God made and created. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't understand why some people... They probably do have, They, probably, I'm not going to lie, they might do have some parents, I'm not going to say all parents like that, that's a shame of their special needs children. Uh, but I could never be ashamed of something God blessed me with. My baby is a blessing from God. I could never be ashamed of something God blessed me with, something God created, something God made, because God makes no mistakes. He doesn't. He makes no mistakes. Um, she cannot help the way she was born. She cannot help the way... She came to the world. She did not make herself. She did not make herself. She did not make herself. That's why you don't abuse them. You don't take them. You don't take no special needs kids. You don't take these special needs people. You don't abuse them. You don't mistreat them and stuff because they cannot help the way they was born. They did not make themselves. It's not their fault they was born different. It's not their fault they was born special needs. It's not their fault they was born with cerebral palsy or Down syndrome or HDAD or um. Uh, autism spectrum disorder. It's not they fault if they was born on the spectrum. It's not they fault they was born special needs. It's not they fault they was born can't talk. It's not they fault they was born some of them born can't walk. You know what I'm saying? My daughter was born can't she couldn't talk or walk when she was born. Um, my daughter did start walking till she got like three or four years old. Um, right now to this day, my daughter's still on diapers. You know what I'm saying? So I. We got we bath her, we change her diapers, we do everything for her because she's not able. My my daughter's severely disabled. She's not able to do nothing for herself. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things she can't do on her own. So I do everything for my baby. I change her diapers. I bath her. I do her hair. I cook for her. You know I do. I take her to her doctor appointments. I do everything for my baby because she's not able to do it for herself. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things she's not able to do for herself, and it's not her fault because she was born. She was born a special needs child. She was born a special needs baby. I found out when she was like one years old, she was special needs. I knew something was wrong with my baby because my baby was one years old and wasn't doing what a regular one year old was supposed to do. She wasn't walking. She wasn't crawling. She didn't know how to say mom. She didn't know how to hold her own bottle. My daughter knew how to do nothing at one years old. So I knew something was wrong with my baby because... Uh, she was born, she was born, she was born different and she was doing, she wasn't doing like a regular one year old supposed to do. She wasn't advancing like a one year old supposed to advance. So I knew something was wrong with my baby. I called the hospital. I let the doctors know, you know, she was, she's one years old. She's not walking. She's, she don't know how to hold on bottle. She don't know how to crawl. She don't know how to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so... They had me bring her in. They ran a, a series of tests on her. They the one found out she was special needs. The hospital did. They found out my daughter was born special needs. So, yeah. So, yeah, my baby's still in the hospital, guys. Thank you guys for your prayers. All the ones that pray for her to get better. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for our prayers. I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate, appreciate your prayers. Um, She's been there a whole week now. Um, I'm about to get off here in a minute and call her doctor because I want to talk to her doctor um, about some things. And um, I will be keeping you guys posted on, you know, my daughter. Um, also, guys, we had a tornado um, two days in a row here in Chicago. We had a tornado. Man, guys, I was so terrified. I swear to God. I hope that tornado lead on him like I'm back. I was so terrified.
Try to fix this. Okay. But yeah, we had a tornado two days in a row, guys. I promise you. Man, I was so terrified. The other night, we had a tornado. Okay. I was praying up a storm for me and my whole entire family. Ooh, I was praying for nothing to happen to none of us. I was praying so hard. Man, I was terrified and praying at the same time. Then, last night, it came back. We had another tornado. We lost power. My lights went out. My building was shaking. My floors were shaking. Um, I was terrified and praying again. I was praying for me and my whole entire family that live in the state of Illinois for nothing to happen to none of us. I was praying so hard for nothing to happen to me and my family. I seriously was. I was praying so hard for nothing to happen to me and my whole entire family. My grandbaby was terrified. My dog, Jackie, was terrified. She, Jackie was so scared. She was shaking. And I had never saw my dog shake like that before. And I felt so bad for her. Jackie was, like, shaking. She was shaking bad. She was shaking so bad. We had to try to, you know, calm her down. And my grandbaby was terrified. She was crying. I had to pick her up. I'm like, my poor, my poor baby. <laughs> my grandbaby was scared. She said, Grandma, I'm scared. And I picked her up, and I just hold her. And I just kept on, I was holding her in my arms and till the tornado was over. I hope my grandbaby till the tornado was over with. And I was praying up a storm. I was praying so hard. I swear to God, I was praying. I was terrified, but praying at the same time and holding my grandbaby at the same time. <laughs> I was praying and terrified and trying to hold her, hold her and keep her calm and hoping she feel better, you know. And praying up a storm for nothing, not to happen to me and my kids and my grandbaby and my family and my building I live in, you know, my possessions and all that. I'm just praying up a storm. And it was making a loud, weird noise. It was a, two, two nights in a row, it was a weird noise. And I got a tornado warning that hit my phone out of nowhere. Then soon I got the warning, I heard a loud, weird noise last night. It sounded so weird and it sounded like a strong, a real strong wind. And it sounded like it was right near my building. And my building was shaking and my floors were shaking and um, my lights went out and everything last night. Yeah, we lost power and everything. It, it it got dark in here. I'm like, my goodness. So I just kept on praying. The more loud the noise got the sound, the closer it sound, the more I prayed. Oh, the more I prayed. I was just praying, 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 praying so hard. And I was asking God, don't let them have to cover. I was covering me and my kids and my whole entire family in the blood of Jesus. And I was praying for God to protect us, keep us safe, and the bad not to happen to us. Ooh, I was just praying. <laughs> I was leaving. I was praying for my daughter in the hospital to be okay. And then did I try to call the hospital and no one was answering the phone. So I was just praying. I was praying, 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 guys. But when I woke up this morning, my lights is back on, thank God. Um, but my lights went out last night. We had lost power for a whole night. So I woke up. I don't know what time it came back on. I was asleep. It might have came back on through the middle of the night. I don't know. I was asleep. But I woke up. The power was back on. So, yeah, thank God, you know, for they kept me and my hope, my whole, hopefully my whole entire family is safe. Hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's okay. Hope ain't nothing happened to no one in my family for real. Um, hope, hope nothing happened to nobody. Hope everybody's doing good, you know. Anyway, guys, so I wanted to um, give you guys an update on my daughter. Um, she is doing better. But I hope to God she stay like that. I hope to God she continue to do good. Um, I miss my baby like crazy. I can't wait she get out the house. I can't wait they discharge her and they bring her home. I mean, they not bring her home. They not going to bring her home. Take that back. I can't wait till they discharge her and I go get the, get my baby bring her home. I miss my baby so much. She'll be gone a whole week from me. I'm going to break my neck, get into the hospital, get my baby up out of there. <laughs> So the doctor said they discharged her. I'm flying about the door. <laughs> I miss my baby. I do. That's my boo-boo. Anyway, uh, anyway, guys, I just wanted to give you guys an update on my daughter and let you know the reason how she the reason she ended up in the hospital. I want to talk to you guys about the tornado that we've been having the last couple of days. Thank God, me and my kids. And my granddaughter is safe. I hope the guy, my whole entire family is safe. I hope my daughter is safe in the hospital. Um, I'm going to call out there in a minute. So anyway, guys, I'm about to end this video. Comment, like, subscribe. Hit the post notification button. 
on this journey with me. You guys are my family. I love you guys. Thank you guys for your positive prayers. Thank you guys for praying for my daughter to get better. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I don't take nothing or no one for granted. All right. Love you guys. Peace.